This is the Dean Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be with you. Today we're going to be taking a look back in history. And we're going to show you how when Muslims ruled a certain part of the world, how they were living in peace with Muslims, Jews, Christians, how they were at the pinnacle of science, of inventions, of knowledge, how there was truly peace when the Muslims ruled according to the divine law that was sent down, the Quran, and the authentic sayings, traditions of the last and final messenger sent to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. It was definitely a time where you didn't have to lock your doors. Crime was almost eradicated and so many other wonderful things were going on, but there was truly peace. So when we come back here on the Dean Show, we're going to learn more about this with Dr. Gerald Dirks. We'll be right back. Sit tight. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. This is 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 the Dean Peace be with you. Assalamu alaikum. How are you, Dr. Gerald Dirks? I am fine, and peace be upon you, brother. Thank you for finding the time to be with us here again on The Dean Show. My pleasure. Now, you have your own section on thedeanshow.com. People can go there to read about you, to know about you. They can log in, www.thedeanshow.com. We've done several shows. You have your own personal section there. Okay. All right. Today, we're going to be talking about when Muslims ruled a part of the world mm -hmm. and the peace that came with that time. Can we get into this topic and talk to us about this, please? I, I think probably the best example of this would be Muslim Andalusia. Andalusia. Yeah, which, uh, you know, Andalusia refers to the Iberian Peninsula, yes. or what today is Spain and Portugal. Uh, and, and this was really a, a remarkable period in the world's history. But before we journey into Muslim Andalusia, we probably ought to take a step back and look at why there even was a Muslim Andalusia. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people say, Muslim Andalusia, oh my goodness, there's Islam conquering by the sword again. Yeah. But we need to take a look at the actual history of what was involved at that point in time. In the Iberian Peninsula at that point in time, in the uh, 600s and early 700s, we had a population that was comprised of Jews, Unitarian Christians, and Trinitarian Christians. This is before the Muslims came. Yeah, before the Muslims were even there. Yes. What was going on was that the Jews were being persecuted mm -hmm. by the Christians because of their religious beliefs. Okay, so we got Jews being persecuted by Christians right. in that area of Andalus, Spain. Right. We have Trinitarian Christians and Unitarian Christians persecuting each other. Okay. So this is a, a place of tremendous religious strife. Who was the king there at that time? Was it? Well, the uh, king was uh, Waitez, or oh. Wit Witiza, yeah. was uh, the king um, who was uh, right before the Muslims moved into uh, Andalusia. I heard there was very high taxes, crime was also very uh, rampant. Well, I, I think the one I, thing I want to focus on, okay. though, is, is this religious persecution. Yeah. That people were not free to practice their religion. They weren't, okay. No. So in this cauldron of religious persecution, what happened is that in the year 710, a Jewish delegation was sent from the Iberian Peninsula to North Africa. A Christian delegation was also sent, Unitarian Christian delegation. And uh, they came to uh, the Muslim rulers in North Africa, and they said, come into the Iberian Peninsula. You know, we need you to come in and take over. As a result of this, in the year 711, 
a small Muslim army under the command of Tarbik, uh, Tariq uh, ibn uh, Ziyad invaded what is today Spain. Mm -hmm. Now, the key thing to remember is as soon as they landed, they were immediately joined up with by Jews and Unitarian Christians. So this was not simply a Muslim invasion. Yes. This was an allied assault by Jews, Unitarian Christians, and Muslims, all fighting against uh, a persecuting uh, Christian group. Now, in fact, one of the, the Christian rulers of, uh, uh, of Ceuta uh, joined the Muslim alliance at this time. So, you know, th th this is, to brand this as conquest by the sword is, is really misleading. This is a myth. To, well, it, certainly there was fighting. But it's a myth to say that the Muslims simply came in of their own initiative and took over. They were asked to come in by the indigenous population mm -hmm. because they knew that under the Muslims, under Islam, there is guaranteed freedom of religion. Can you force someone by the sword to become a Muslim? No, absolutely, that's absolutely against Islam. Absolutely against Islam. We're told in the second chapter of the Quran, let there be no compulsion in religion, period. This is a flat, absolute statement. Mm -hmm. So, no, as a Muslim, I am not allowed to try to force someone to, to become a Muslim. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. Yeah. As a Muslim, in fact, I bear the responsibility of guaranteeing someone else's freedom of religion. You know, this I have to do yeah. to live up to the Quran. Mm -hmm. So, the Jews and, and the Unitarian Christians in the Iberian Peninsula very definitely wanted the Muslims to come in because then they would have freedom of religion. So this sort of sets the stage. In 711, Muslims did invade, and by 714, they had uh, almost all of the Iberian Peninsula under their control. So how was it now? Muslims come in, was there havoc? Was it hell? Well, what happened was uh, the Iberian Peninsula enter entered its golden age. Golden age. Golden age. So that's the antithesis now of havoc and hell. I mean, golden oh, age, oh. you're talking about like more like uh, heaven on earth? Well, you know, the rest of Europe is looking at the dark ages. Okay. But in the meantime, in, in Muslim Andalusia, we're seeing never before seen progress in agriculture, in architecture, in literature, in science, um, the Greek classics are being studied in Muslim Andalusia. In fact, this, this is an interesting thing. If you go to college today and you take a course in Plato and you read uh, you know, Plato's works, you're reading an English translation of a Greek translation of an Arabic translation of the Greek original. Wow. Because these Greek works were preserved in Arabic and that was really about the only place they were preserved. Let's take a break, hold on off that note, and we'll be right back with more on The Dean Show. Whatever Allah commands you to do, you need to do it. Islam has tolerance and mercy and compassion. To know that Allah, you know, will forgive you as long as you do what you need to do, as long as you turn back to Him. Islam is a system of mercy and compassion and it is for the best benefit of all of the people that's around it, Muslim and non-Muslim. Back here on The Dean Show with Dr. Gerald Dirks, we're talking about the golden ages, you said it. Yes. Heaven on earth? Oh, well, <laughs> I don't think we can classify anything as heaven on Nothing earth. Nothing can compare to the, bear, the, the delights that are waiting the paradise mm -hmm. and the, uh, of receiving uh, when, you, when you do God's will and you live a righteous life and then God gives you his mercy and grace and you get that paradise. But it was a good time. It was overall peace. Oh, compared were, to the rest of Europe, how, it was, how it was things tremendous. Are going to, yeah. It was tremendous. I mean, here you had universities uh, operating. You had intellectual advancement taking place. You had uh, advancement in so many different areas, whereas the rest of Europe was basically uh, still in the dark ages. Now, let me ask you this. Was God's law according to Islam, implemented at that time in Spain? In many places it was. Yes. And, and uh, you know, we always have to acknowledge that there's always exceptions. Yes. You know, and that some individual uh, may be the exception. But, but, the majority... but as a general rule, yes. So, so we had freedom of religion. Yeah. And in fact, um, 
about five years ago, Harvey Cox, mm -hmm. celebrated Christian theologian, wrote a short article in the Harvard Divinity Bulletin in which he talked about Muslim Andalusia and held it up as the shining example of interfaith dialogue, that, that this was the crowning pinnacle of interfaith dialogue. Amongst other things, Cox talked about what he calls the convivencia, this period of conversation going on. And he notes that Muslim scholars, bearded rabbis, Christian priests and monks all sit around a table together, studying and reading over old manuscripts under the auspices of Bishop Raymond of Seville. So, I mean, this is one classic example. You know, put together your, your Jewish rabbis, your Muslim scholars, your Christian priests and monks. They're all sitting around this huge table, jointly studying. Mm -hmm. You know, this is, uh, where, where do we have this really happening even today? So, you mentioned that, that at that time, science was really at its pinnacle also. And tell us now, because a lot of time when you mention religion, and then people feel it conflicts with science. But when we study here, we see that there's no persecution of scientists at that time? No, uh, no, 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 just the opposite. Um, you know, Islam has always encouraged uh, the development of both religious knowledge and secular knowledge, uh, has been a champion of the sciences. You had early Muslims uh, accurately figuring out the circumference of the earth when most of Europe was still convinced that the earth was flat. Mm -hmm. uh, so science has always been important in Islam. Another example of, of this interfaith cohesion that we see in Muslim Andalusia is under uh, Abdul Rahman III, the caliph or ruler of Muslim Andalusia between around 912 uh, and 961. Here's uh, the ruler of Muslim Andalusia, and he goes and appoints Hasai ibn Shapira, a Jewish rabbi, to be his foreign minister. So again, we see this interfaith um, working together that is taking place in Muslim Andalusia, uh, a far cry from what we often see today. Other examples, uh, Dante's Divine Comedy heavily influenced, Harvey Cox would argue, by uh, Arabic sources that were from Andalusia. Mm -hmm. And one of the most famous of Christian mystics, St. John of the Cross, according to Cox, heavily influenced in Andalusia by Muslim mysticism. So we have this crosstalk going on with some influence uh, taking place. Perhaps one of the, the most exciting examples of that is to turn to uh, Cordoba, the city of Cordoba in Muslim Andalusia in the first half of the 12th century. And we have two giants, intellectual giants, living in Cordoba at the same time. One of them is Maimonides, probably the most famous Jewish rabbi of uh, the Middle Ages, uh, and also living at the same time, Ibn Rushd, Muslim scholar, scientist, thinker, known in the West as Averroes, but mm -hmm. Ibn Rushd. These two giants, intellectual giants, living in Cordoba at the same time, Ibn Rushd, nine years older than Maimonides. And if we look at Maimonides' 13-point creed of Judaism, which Orthodox Judaism to this day says, this is what you have to believe in to be a Jew. We can look at these 13 points and see how they were heavily influenced by Ibn Rushd's prior eight-point creed of Islam. Mm -hmm. So we have this crosstalk, this cross-influence going on, where with respectful interfaith dialogue, Jews are pushing Christians and Muslims to refine their thinking. Christians are pushing Jews and Muslims to refine their thinking. Muslims are pushing Christians and Jews to refine their thinking. And all of it being done in a collegial way. 
you know, not a debate to bam, bam, I'm going to score points on you, mm -hmm. but a general advancement of religious knowledge as well as scientific knowledge. So there's a healthy dialogue going on. A very healthy dialogue. And how are the rest of the, the lay people, how, how are they functioning in society? Is there justice for all? Is, is, yes. Are they, are they safe? Yes, they are, they are safe. Uh, again, there are always exceptions, but yeah, as a general rule, it was a period of great safety. It was a period of wealth compared to the rest of Europe, much higher standard of living than the rest of Europe. Again, the rest of Europe's in the Dark Ages. Mm -hmm. But here we have huge universities being built, huge libraries being built, uh, and all of this available uh, to the people, whether they be Jew, Christian, or Muslim. Wow, this is amazing. We're going to take a break, and we'll be right back with more here on The Dean Show. You think these things are going to bring you happiness? You know why you keep going back to the club, and you keep going back to these desires? Because you never find satisfaction. Fiction. It's going to end up causing you, if it hasn't already, a lot of pain. You think you're happy? You're kidding yourself. You're kidding yourself. You really are. What we are offering in Islam, what we have found in Islam for ourselves, is a means by which our hearts are at peace. They're at rest. They're not discontent. We are pleased with what we have. Back here on The Dean Show, and we're talking to Dr. Gerald Dirks, and we're giving a great example from history when Islam was implemented, that there was justice, that there was peace, that Jews, Christian, and Muslims were having healthy dialogue. Mm -hmm. They were collaborating. Science was at its pinnacle. Yeah. Other people you had mentioned were in darkness. Yeah, throughout Europe. Talk to us a little bit about this. Yeah, throughout Europe, this, this was the Dark Ages. This was a period where knowledge was being lost, mm -hmm. not gained. Uh, it was a period of, of losing intellectual uh, knowledge, not uh, advancing intellectual knowledge. Mm -hmm. But Muslim Andalusia was, was very different and uh, continued that way for several centuries. Though eventually, under what's called the Reconquista, or the reconquering, you saw you know, various uh, Christian kingdoms, Castile, Aragon, Leon, etc., beginning to push the Muslims back, primarily because the Muslims began to fragment yeah. and uh, establish their own little petty fiefdoms as opposed to remaining a unified force. And so finally, by the late 1400s, you know, the Muslims were practically driven out of the Iberian Peninsula. And the Spanish, under um, Ferdinand and Isabella, instituted uh, the Spanish Inquisition which is probably one of the history's great examples of the horrors of religious intolerance, yeah. in which Jews and Muslims were systematically tortured in an effort to make them uh, convert to Christianity, or systematically killed if they didn't. This was terrorism. Oh, absolutely. At but the a highest state sponsored, level. State sponsored, yeah. uh, state sponsored terrorism. Um, we're told that between somewhere between 100,000 and 170,000 Jews refused to convert. And in 1492, by uh, proclamation of Ferdinand and Isabella, uh, any Jew who did not convert to Christianity was expelled from Spain. So this left 100,000 to 170,000 Jews in the Iberian Peninsula that um, simply had to leave. Boom. Um, so what do they do? How do they? managed to survive? The answer is the Sultan Bayazid II, who is the Sultan, the ruler of the Ottoman Empire, Muslim Kingdom, sent his naval fleet under the command of Admiral Kamal Rais to evacuate the oppressed Jews and Muslims. But now the Muslims the Peninsula. are sending their fleet to go and help the Jews. Yeah, to evacuate the Jews from Spain. Very interesting. And resettle them in North Africa and in Turkey, uh, etc. And give them places to stay, yes. food and shelter. Yes, yes, yes. Muslims are doing this. Yeah, absolutely, Muslims are doing wow. this. Wow. Uh, in fact, uh, you know, the Sultan is, is quoted as saying, they, meaning Ferdinand and Isabella, impoverished their kingdom and enriched mine, referring to the Jews who left uh, Spain 
and, and came to live in the Ottoman Empire. And in the Ottoman Empire, they were granted religious freedom, which they didn't have in Christian Spain. And they were granted limited uh, self-government, which they certainly didn't have in Christian Spain. Mm -hmm. So there was always, amongst the, the Jews or Christians living under Muslim rule, there was justice. There was dialogue, healthy dialogue, and people weren't now scared of their lives or being, you know, cut by the sword. Right, exactly. Oh, exactly. That, uh, you know, uh, especially for the Jews, this was a, a great uh, point of religious freedom. You know, it's unfortunate that we tend to look at Jewish-Muslim relationships only through the prism of the last 60, 70 years. Mm -hmm. And we fail to see that up until that time, we have this centuries-long history of working together. Yeah. Where, where Muslims were rather consistently befriending Jews, yeah. uh, granting them religious freedom, etc., that they did not have uh, in Christian countries. Why do you think now, in the last few minutes that we have, there's this sensationalism that's created, you know, and there's this hype in the media that, you know, Islam is coming, Islam's going to get you, and then if it comes, that's it. All your freedom, everything that, you know, uh, of good you have is going to be gone. Mm -hmm. And they create this fear, frenzy in the people. Why do you think this is? Well, it sells. Uh, sells, business. Sure, it sells. You sell newspapers this way, you sell magazines this way, you sell advertising on TV because your TV ratings are going up, because you're giving a sensational story. You know, it's, it's the old thing, uh, uh, dog bites pan, you're not going to put it on the, the news. Man bites dog, you're going to headline. Yeah. You know, turn on your local news, what headlines it? It's fires and auto crashes and, you know, murder and mayhem, because this sells. Uh, unfortunately, you know, the golden age doesn't sell. Yeah. And how important was that golden age? I mean, it's crucial. Harvey Cox, going back to that article I, I referred to earlier, looking down the road after the end of Muslim Spain, looks at Miguel de Cervantes's classic book, Don Quixote and sees Don Quixote as being a nostalgic wish to recapture what was lost with the fall of Muslim Andalusia. This is Spain's greatest literary work, a nostalgic wish for the return of what was lost when Muslim Andalusia fell. Wow, amazing. This is very... Um Lightning, thank you again for being with us. And if somebody wants to get a hold of you mm -hmm. to have you come down to get your books, to invite you for a lecture, how can they do that? Uh, they can go to my website, which is dirksonlinebooks.com. Dirks Online Books, all one word. Thank you very much. May my God pleasure, Almighty brother. Reward you Good for to being see with us. Thank you. And thank you for sitting through another episode of The Dean Show. Continue to tune in every week to learn more about the Muslims to learn more, more about Islam and you can also catch our new radio show at the deanshow.com blog section and we hope to see you again next time same time same channel until then peace be unto you